welcome to another inbox review. This time we're looking at the Hobby 2000 Heinkel HE111H3, Eastern Front 1941. Nice bit of box art there. Uh, we've got a couple of scheme options, which we'll look at in a bit more detail in a minute. Another picture of the same front cover, um, kit number 72049. Just a little bit of information in different languages. And again, from the front. Nice, fairly sturdy box, top opening. And the first thing we're greeted with is the instructions. Let's pop that up over there. Um, nice colour instructions, or gloss, at least this bit is. Um, glossy finish. This one comes with masks, always a bit of a bonus with all the glazing. Uh, stand apart map. Uh, colour call outs there in a variety of paints. Interestingly, no Humbrol, but we have got Tamiya, Revel, Mr. Colour, Attacker, Ammo, El Clad. Okay, interactive, and of course, all important, they're actually got the RML code, so you should be able to match them to, you know, to any paint range that you've got. It's a kind of fold out um, instruction sheet. As some of you may already be aware, this is actually a rebox of the Hasegawa kit, and this is, looks to be pretty much an exact copy of the Hasegawa type instructions. Um, pretty standard build, really. We've got the cockpit going together here. Um, um, fuselage, then we go on to the, the engine cells, the glazed nose, uh, the wings, Bombay, um, torpedoes or bombs. Um, gear um, going on and various bits and pieces at the end, propellers and etc. And that's pretty much it. It's not an overly complicated uh, build. We've then got two really nice um, schemes, Romanian, uh, one and, a, and obviously a standard uh, Luftwaffe type um, scheme. Um, fairly standard sort of splinter camouflage. This is Nice bit, something a bit different. This is probably the one I'll look to do just to see it's a bit different. So that's the instructions. Then in the box, we basically get one set of clear parts, we get our decals and our masks, and we've got one bag of plastic. What I'll do just quickly, well, oh, and now I've managed to spill some, keep that out of the way of that. Vinyl cut sort of masks. Um, I've used these in the past, they've been pretty good. I know some people don't like them, they prefer this sort of um, the Edouard type yellow uh, tape mask, like the Tamiya tape, but I find they were okay, they did the job. Always nice to have them in the kit anyway, a bit of a bonus. Um, really nice, really nice. The decals there, um, cartograph, so we know they're gonna be pretty good, they're printed beautifully. Um, so that's good news. And then we've got this one. I'm just going to put that there. Then we've got one bag here with all the parts. I'm just going to put those up there. Away for a moment. And then we'll just go through each uh, fret. These are marked A which is quite useful, so you know, this is your A-frame, um, recess panel lines, I would say fairly heavy for a 170 second scale, but I'm sure they'll look pretty good once they're painted up. Certainly the plastic is nice and crisp. We've got some nice interior detail in there, the sort of ribbon. There is a few injection pin marks, Probably whether you're going to notice them or not, I don't know. And to be honest, they probably wouldn't take much to clean up anyway. There's certainly no flash, considering this is... I don't know where the year of this kit is. Um, probably need to look on scale, mate. Um, but it certainly looks in good condition there. There's no real horrible sink marks or anything to worry about. On, certainly on that fret, anyway. Now we go on to... Some Bombay parts. This is the part of the cockpit here. Um, this little, I assume these are wheel wells, probably. Again, they're nicely detailed. There's no 
injection pin marks in there, which is good. Again, it's a really shiny, crisp plastic, which is nice. That's frame C. That all looks good to me. No real flash on there. Maybe a tiny bit on the actual spoon itself, but that's nothing to worry about. Engine nacelles. Again, this is part D and F on the same sort of attached or at least attached in the same frame um, this has actually got some nice raised raised rivets on here all looks pretty good though we've then got landing gear some of the cockpit this is K by the way um, landing gear some of the cockpit, de cockpit details here one of the propellers Seems to be one part missing from here. We we'll need to check the bag on that, find out what's missing. This is the, often the problem when you have, uh, I think I know what it is. If we look on this one, hopefully that's in the bag. I'll have to check that very carefully. It's the actual uh, sort of spinner cap there. That's the problem with the parts are all in one bag. They tend to get um, bashed around a little bit. Here we've got the rest of the bomb bays, the torpedo, the larger bombs. Nice detail on the, the wheels there, uh, the exhausts. All looks really nicely detailed for the scale, I have to say. We've got the little propeller part for the torpedo. This is J and V. Oh, and W. And U, in fact. <laughs> They've got a lot of little frames set into one there. I think this is probably a duplicate. N another torpedo, another bomb, more wheels. Exactly the same parts. We then come to the wing. Um, again, nicely recessed panel lines. Um, we've got some rivets here. They're all recessed. Don't know how well you can see that. It all looks pretty good to me. Then, worryingly, that missing piece does not seem to be wrapping around in the bag. I'll double check everything first before I panic. <coughs> made in Japan we've got sprue S and R which is some of the clear parts they're quite nice reasonably clear not too distorted a bit thicker often as things are with 170 second but nothing too much to worry about there I don't think a couple of caps And then we've got the other clear parts, the, the nose. They're really clear, actually, really nice. Hopefully you can see those, okay. Again, there's no flash. Nothing too much to worry about there. All looks really good. Excellent, well, that's it. That looks like a good kit. I should look forward to starting on that, although I may have a missing part. I'm gonna check all the bits. And if not, I guess I'll have to talk to Hobby 2000 to see if I can get a replacement. Anyway, thanks for watching.